You are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. Welcome to the Successful Screenwriter Podcast, where we discuss anything and everything screenwriting. Here we interview successful screenwriters and filmmakers to find out just what it takes to make it in the industry. All right, welcome to the podcast. We have on actor and screenwriting savant, Neil Chase. Neil, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me, Jeffrey. Always a pleasure. Oh, <laughs> of course. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. So I wanted to bring you in because we wanted it to, to dip into writing from set itself when you have last minute changes. And I think this could be a really great topic to talk to our, our audience about because it's not something anybody ever discusses. I mean, a lot of people think that they um, they write the script, sell it to the producers, and then it's, it's good to go. Um, but before we get diving into this topic, I do want to get Neil Chase's origin story. I've really only been writing screenplays uh, for about 13 years now. I like how you make that sound like it's not that long. <laughs> it's not that long. No, it, honestly, like people think, you know, uh, success comes quickly, but, but, you know, overnight success is always like 10 years plus, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah. So, so it seems to me like, uh, honestly, the people that, that I know that are, uh, you know, phenomenal at this, they've been doing it for, you know, 20, 30 years. Right. Uh, at least. So, so to me, it's like, I still feel like a, a newcomer. In yeah. Game in a lot of ways. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've always loved writing. Uh, I've done it since I was a little kid, but um, I didn't really take up screenwriting until I took my first acting class. Okay. Um, and so, so it was really acting that got me into screenwriting and um, yeah, I started off with just, you know, writing little shorts and then I, um, uh, I actually got together with some friends and we filmed some of these. Nice. And um, that gave me kind of like some of that little bit of that onset experience. Okay. We're going to talk about today. But uh, then I thought I'd try my hand at features. And um, that was a whole new ball game. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, the the funny thing was I, I really had no gauge of did I write anything that was any good. Right. Um, so I started entering a uh, screenplay contest just because it was a really good gauge uh, to see, am I on the right track? Mm-hmm. And uh, lo and behold, I actually started doing fairly well. And, yeah. And, um, you know, one thing led to another. And, and the beautiful thing about this industry is uh, kind of really doesn't matter where you're from. I think if you write something that that is good enough, that can get some attention, um, there are filmmakers out there who will want to put it to film. That is so true. Um, boy, I mean, you don't, you don't need an MFA in, in screenwriting to, to find success. You don't, you could be anybody. Um, it, it's all about what you can write. And it's funny you say that, that uh, you started putting and kind of started doing well. I remember standing in line at a CVS Mm-hmm. And I was picking up, I don't know, some junk food or something. And and I'm just scrolling through my phone and I and it saw that I had placed in um I had made the quarters in script of Palooza and that was like one of the first scripts I had ever written forever ago. And I started screaming in the middle of the CVS, going, <laughs> Oh my God, right? And people look at me like, Are you all right? <laughs> I was like, cause because I had never thought of it, never done anything like that, but I had been writing for a, a little while at that point. Um so it's yeah, it's kind of funny how yeah a film festival a screenplay contest can really kind of start showing you where you fall in line with your peers absolutely i love that you took it you came from an acting perspective because that even gives you a little bit more of an in when you're writing characters absolutely yeah so writers writers sometimes tend to to look at stories from um i guess from the story perspective you know but having um, having done some acting beforehand, it really allowed me to to dial in on the character development and the dialogue. Yeah. Side of things. Yeah. Well, I, I can tell you that your writing is exceptional because we haven't had. So, yeah, you know, obviously, I run Script Summit, right? Uh, we haven't had a winner win 
consecutively in years, you're the only person ever do it. Um, and, and, and that's, yeah, I know. <laughs> and they're in that case behind you. And, and, and so that, so that says a lot. Um, and, and then I was like, well, I really, this guy's pretty talented. And we ended up bringing you on to staff at We Fix Your Script because of it. So, I mean, you never know where a festival can take you. I'm sure you weren't thinking that when you had entered. Um, no, absolutely not. It's yeah. It's been such a great ride. Oh yeah. We're so glad to have you, but let, let's talk about writing from, set so as an as an actor and a writer and, and you've been in films you you're a working actor and and, yep. and writing so when you are on set and you have to start making changes like, like walk us through the process walk us through the challenges and the personalities that you have to deal with so so i i think if we take sort of a step back first off uh, and and just look at the rewrite process sure you know, um for a lot of for a lot of newer writers, especially, the idea is kind of like, um, oh, that's you know, that's just part of the creative process when they're working on their specs. People have all the time in the world, right? Um, yeah. There's no real outside pressures. Yeah. It's really the the only constraints are kind of the the limits of your own imagination. Um, but when you're doing a, a writing for hire, a specifically on a film set, there are as a constant bombardment of outside forces, yeah, um, you know, sort of guiding your hand and, and, and giving you deadlines and pushing you along the way, you know, um, there are times when literally, you know, I've been on set uh, and, and the director calls me over and says, this scene's not working. Uh, mm. You know, everybody's literally on standby. And he's wow. Like, You've got, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Can you rewrite this scene for me? <laughs> no pressure no pressure and yeah i mean there was a movie um we made uh, a few years back it's called uh, a frosty affair mm-hmm. it was one that i was brought on specifically for rewrites the the uh, original writer um for whatever reason he wasn't part of the uh, filming process you know yeah. so, so they didn't have him on set uh, so they invited me to come on board and, uh, and that was kind of my role there. And um, I remember we were filming what is the, the final scene of the movie. And uh, it takes place in a little church. There's this uh, open field and the, the hero and heroine, they get on a snowmobile and they ride off into the sunset. So it's okay. that kind of. You know, okay. It's like a Christmas theme sort of winter uh, yeah. rom-com movie. So here we are in this little church. The director pulls me aside and he says, um, this isn't working. It's, it's, it's kind of the dialogue is dragging on. We need it to be a little bit more punchy. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's just not working. Can you retool it? <laughs> I say, okay, how much time do I have? He says, well, the sun is setting. So like it's already going down and they need, they're going to lose their, they're going to lose their shot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so so I literally had like, I think 10 minutes. Um, And so here we are, you know, the director basically says, okay, we're going to take a break for 10 minutes. They're setting up the shot outside for everything. Um, And off I go into one little corner of this little church that we're filming in. Uh, I grab a pew, I sit down and, and I just start, you know, thinking, yeah. okay, well, what can I do? I'm, I'm slashing lines. I'm trying to come up with new dialogue. And, you know, I, I call the director over. I'm like, how's this? He's like, oh, I like this line, but I don't know. This one needs work. You know, and it's like this back and forth really right. quickly. And it gets to the point where, where he looks at it and goes, yeah, that's it. That's good. Great. Let's do this. Wow. And off he runs and they shot it. Wow. You know, and, and, and that's the scene now that's in the movie. Well, that's um, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. So uh, this director, he didn't want to work with the original writer. So that to me is is a flag telling me that there maybe there was a personality conflict or something like that. So so he brought you in and I'm assuming the director knew you and knew of your work, knew of your reputation. Yes. Yes. So I'm, I'm uh, good friends with this director. His name is Dylan Pierce. Uh, he's a he's a um a filmmaker here in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, okay. Fantastic guy. He does uh, quite a few of these um, romantic comedy films, Christmas movies, uh, things of this nature. You know, um, and, 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 I, don't, and, I don't think there was any actual issue between, between okay. him and the original writer. I think what happened, as my understanding, was that 
once that writer had had sold his script, yeah. he just really they were done with it. He was done with it. You know, wow. That, that happens sometimes. Right? Yeah, sure. A lot of writers can can just walk away from a project. Right. But that tells you how much networking and making relationships is important in this business, you know, because he, he thought of you. Right. And so a director is going to think of somebody that they want to work with, but they're also going to think of, OK, who do I know? Who do I trust? Mm-hmm. Who's competent? who can get this done, who can have my back. I mean, that's what a director's thinking about. And so that you came to mind, that's huge. Cause he's, he's got to know a list of people he could go through. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's like, that's like gotta be one of the biggest compliments you can get of a right from a director is when they say like, Hey, can you work with me on this project? That's absolutely, absolutely. fascinating. You know, I had Melissa Rundle on the show and she writes for streaming services. Um, and so she's worked on some shows. She's working on a show right now. And she told me, and I love this, she said, everybody wants their stench on the script. And I want to get your take on that. It's accurate. I want to get your take on that as as far as it goes with writing on set, because you've already told me that the director and you kind of collaborated on the scene to get it to where he wanted it, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But what other kind of influences are you getting? Well, one of the one of the tricky things that uh, the writers maybe don't think of when it comes to rewriting um, somebody else's work mm-hmm. is the fact that you have to match their voice. Oh yeah. Right. It's, yeah. it's, it's different than, than taking your own script and rewriting it mm-hmm. because it's already in your voice. So you don't even have to think about it. Yeah. Uh, with somebody else's work, you know, the, there's always this temptation to say, Oh, you know, I, I could do so much better or, or, you know, whatever with, with uh, the words that are on this page, but that's not the goal. The goal is really to, to stay in line uh, and try to match that original writer's voice as much as you can, because after all, that's what brought the, the producer and the director and the studio to that script. They obviously liked something about it. That's a really good point. You know, and and for you to try to change that so completely, uh, I think you're doing yourself a disservice, and probably that original script as well. It's um, it's a difficult thing to be that kind of a chameleon, and mm-hmm. and match a voice as a writer. I mean, if you're able to do that, you're you're an exceptional writer because you have to yeah. you have to be able to look beyond yourself. And, and man, that goes into like analyzing, that goes into analyzing scene structure that goes into analyzing like action, descriptive action that that's, that's next level stuff. Um, that's fantastic. Yeah. That, and, and the only way to do that, I would say just practice unless you have some right. tips. Right. No, it, it really is practice. You yeah. Know? Um, it, it's, it's, it, it kind of goes along with, uh, you know, there's a favorite saying I've got of uh, Bruce Lee's. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but, but the mm-hmm. idea is he said, you know, I'm not afraid of, of the man who practices 10,000 punches. I'm afraid of the man who practices one punch 10,000 times. Yep. Yep. And, and same thing with <laughs> it's writing. true. You know, you, 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 the only way you're going to get better in this game yeah. is just by doing it over and over and over and over again. And, and with rewriting, um, that really is the name of the game right? yeah. because uh, especially when you're, when you're doing it for someone else, because I guarantee they're not going to like everything that you bring to their table. Yeah. You know? um, and so you have to keep sort of keep going and keep going and keep going. And, th- and the funny thing is rewriting on set there's there's additional challenges. It's not just making the director happy. Okay. It's not just making the producers happy. You also have to make the actors happy. <laughs> and and the number of times that I've had the case where, you know, the actor will call you over or the director will call you over to have a meeting with the actors to say where they say, you know, I don't think my character would say something like this. Can you give me something better? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Have you experienced that on both ends? So as a, as a writer, you've experienced that you've had actors, mm-hmm. you know, uh, come to you and say that, but as an actor, have you been working on a part and be like, this doesn't feel authentic to what my character would say? Have you had that issue from both perspectives? I have. It's one of those things. I think what it, it will come down to the, the director. Yeah. How flexible. That director is. Okay. Um, it's really interesting. Some, some people are, are, you know, very open to to letting the the actor make the character their own, and then in doing so, allow them to make 
tweaks and changes. Yeah. Um, I think as long as the intent of the words is there, they don't really care how it's said. Yeah. Some actors will definitely let you, Im- Im- or I'm sorry, sorry, some directors will let you improv on set. Right. Um, and then, and then others would like stick to the script. And I got to tell you, you, you know, from my perspective, like I put so much into writing a script. Um, you know, I, I use a lot of subtext. Every, every line has a meaning when I, I don't, I don't just write throwaway lines. So when I send out a script, it, they're acting it out, whatnot. Um, if they start improving, there's risk that you will lose chunks of the scene and even aspects of character development. Mm-hmm. And so I always wonder, um, is, is that risk ever weighed when it comes to improvisation? I don't mean to drift away from the onset rewrite that we want to talk about, but I think that's an excellent question um, because it really kind of is part and parcel of the whole process, isn't it? You know, uh, rather than uh, writing down new words, you're really just sort of coming up with them off the top of your head. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's really kind of the same uh, beast as it were. Um it's it's interesting. I've I've seen different directors uh, approach it in different ways. Yeah. Um, some are very open to the entire improv process because yeah. they sort of uh, feel like, um, you know, you might get that that genie in a bottle that sort of right. magic will yeah. happen that you you hadn't expected. Other directors sort of take a more nuanced approach, which is to say they say, okay, listen, let's film it the way that it's written. Okay. And then once we have the takes that I like as the director, yeah. Then let's try it your way. And let's try to play with it and and do some of these other things. And yeah, that, that makes way sense. They have, they have options at the end of the day and they can I like see that. what plays best. Yeah, they can play around in the edit and then they can decide, okay, what works, what doesn't. And then probably save the script supervisor from losing their damn mind. <laughs> <laughs> so they're probably they're I can just see him standing there with the script going nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! There's nothing script supervisors hate more than than scene after scene of improv. There's, there's, there's nothing. They're just going crazy. We're in no man's land now, folks. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Um, all right. Well, you know, it's funny you're talking about um, the voice of a writer because I got brought on to a project and they were like, "We have a problem with the script." They they brought me and I took a look at it. It had seven different writers. Um, oh my God. And so you've got seven different voices trying to come together. But yeah, I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, oh my God, I have to match these voices. But I've got like seven different things. So I ended up going through and picking one type of voice that was most prominent of the script. And then I matched that and I lined it up. But the it was it was one of the most difficult things I'd ever done. But mm-hmm. but once I did that, it's like, okay, I can do anything now as a writer. Like I, I have proved my salt. So yeah, I mean, coming up with that voice is so difficult. So so when it comes to to rewriting the set, what are the d- types of, of techniques you use? Like I know when I do a rewrite or when I, I actually teach a rewriting class at, uh, at Script University. So I teach advanced rewriting. So when I teach rewriting, I, I tell students, you know, a, a particular way of doing it. So you're going to start with this type of rewrite. Like we'll start with, with just characterization and we'll re- re- rewrite characters. But the last rewrite I'll do is dialogue. What's mm-hmm. kind of your approach to it? This podcast is brought to you by the successful screenwriter.com, where you can find instructional books, videos, courses, and screenplays of Hollywood's biggest hits to download. As an added bonus, visit www.thesuccessfulscreenwriter.com to download the guide for every screenwriter for free. Yes, free. Available exclusively at thesuccessfulscreenwriter.com. Now, back to our show. I think it depends on where in production we are. Okay. Um, so, for example, um, with, with A Frosty Affair, I was brought on to that script um, when it was still in pre-production. Mm. And we worked on rewriting it and rewriting it. And when I say we, I mean I worked hand in hand with a director to make sure that he got what he wanted out of that film um and uh, out of that script i should say yeah yeah and um but then once we're on set uh it's sort of a a a different set of challenges okay because of the time pressures that are involved you know time is money on set right yeah Uh, you can't have people just standing by or sitting around doing nothing uh we're talking full 12 to 16 hour days 
Uh, wow. Oh, absolutely. That's 16 that's hour days. Day. Yeah. That, that's, that's a long, that's a long shift. It, it, that, that, and that's pretty normal, to be honest. You know, uh, officially, um, you know, shifts should be like uh, a shooting day should be like ten to twelve hours. Yeah. But that doesn't really take into consideration all the setup and all the teardown and everything like that that's required. Um, and and you know, as a as a writer, um, you're often required to either come in early or or stay a little bit late to, to discuss uh, certain things. You're first on set and last to leave, huh? Lots of times. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because you're one of those people you are you are part of you're a key creative. Yeah. On set. Right. Yeah. So, so um, whatever you do that day uh, will be used either that day or in the coming days. Right. 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 Um, so it's 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 kind of a, a pretty important um, position. The interesting thing being on set for rewrite specifically there are some days when you're just kind of sitting around. Yeah. You know, and, and and I, 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 to do. <laughs> that's probably a good thing actually. Yeah, it, it is, you know? Uh, and then there's those days where they're just so hectic because uh, there's a lot of moving parts and things need to get done. Uh, you need to get through the scene. Um, and, and people are just like waiting for you to, to give them those revised pages. Do you have last minute issues coming in where producers aren't happy with any particular aspects and then you have to kind of deal with the producer's perspective as well? Uh, I haven't personally, um, although I'm sure that directors feel a lot of that. Yeah. Um, typically, the, the, the chain of communication, at least for me on set, has always been through the director primarily. Right. Um, Unless unless the director puts me together with one of the actors and then we go off together to to sit down and discuss their character and their dialogue. Um, But but I haven't had uh, very many instances of of producers coming to me directly to say, oh, you know, yeah, like you to make this change or this change. It usually goes through the director. Just the director. That's the person in charge on set creation. Of course. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Basically what it sounds like is if you're doing an onset rewrite, you have to like want, you have to really know your stuff. I mean, you have to be able to uh, quickly analyze a scene and break it down. So it sounds like that's probably where the biggest strength is outside of like knowing the characters and knowing the scene, but, but how do I look at the scene? How do I quickly break it down? How do I get the most punch up from it? So are you, are you looking at more of a let's see what kind of subtext we can get into this and cut lines down or are you even like not even considering that and how do i just how do i just get this on the page so they can shoot it in 10 minutes right so so there's there's a a couple of different ways of looking at it the first and foremost is know that script inside and out you know that that i think that's key um even if you're brought in just to rewrite, you still have to know these characters. You have to understand them. You have to know their backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, sometimes there isn't one. And, and you sort of have to figure one out as, as the new, quote unquote, new writer. Interesting. Uh, um, and, and so I think that helps. Uh, a lot of times writers, we think we know what's best. Yeah. Or a given scene. Um, maybe because we become so close to the material and we think, okay, this is the right way. But then when you talk with the director, when you talk with the the cinematographer, when you talk with the actors, yeah. um, the other people who are putting this movie together, they will bring viewpoints that maybe you hadn't considered. And it's yeah. good to, to genuinely listen to what they're saying, yeah. where they're coming from. I, I find actors in particular are a great source of information because they are the most invested in their own characters, right? If mm. you're going to embody that character uh, for 90 to 120 minutes of film, um, you know, a lot of actors, they, they become that person. Right. And so they will bring a lot of uh, that personality and that character's experiences and, and uh, viewpoints and things like this into the mix. And, and so when they say, you know, my character wouldn't say this, I think that's something really worth listening to. And then you have this conversation with them. Well, what would your character say? Right. How do you think your character would say this? And, and what would your character talk about? And things like this. And you can have a discussion. And, and you know, um, 
it's one of those things I think as a creative, uh, it's wonderful to have those conversations and, and you feel like you could probably spend like days talking to these people yeah. about this. But unfortunately, the reality being, you know, you don't have that much time. And usually it's always, you know, it's it's like, okay, we've got uh, maybe an hour if we're doing this over lunchtime. Right. People are eating. I'll be in my little corner rewriting because we've got this nice hour long break. Yeah. You know, and I can I can take advantage of that. So it's okay to kind of lean on this on the uh, on the cast then if you need to. So screenwriters, I always say we're the best thieves in the world, but I also think we're we're also the best problem solvers. Because I Absolutely. think that that's essentially what we do. And when you have to do that rewrite, you're torn between okay, what does the director want? What is the what does the actor want to do? And then how does this make sense for the story? Right. Um, one thing I do when I come into a rewrite, when I am reworking a scene that is not working, is I always think, okay, what is the character's motivation for this scene? Why are they here? What is their emotional truth? And how do I sell that to the audience? And if I can kind of hone in on those kind of three things, I can cut all the fat away. You know, you don't need the ex- the excessive exposition. You know, you don't have to have people uh, telling their feelings. I love it. I think there's a lot of power in silence in an emotional scene personally. So when I have a character having a, a, a powerful moment emotionally, whether it's a big reveal or something, I will write less dialogue and allow that actor to embody that scene to sell that moment. Because if you really think when you are hurt, when you are wounded, you're not talky, right. you know, and, um, and you still, you'll see that with a lot of scripts though. You'll see um, an overuse of dialogue to express emotion. And if this is a stage play, then you can get away with that. Right. right. But, but not in a film. I think part of that comes from uh, perhaps this idea of white space on the page. Ah, uh, yeah, writers. right. Uh, we're told constantly there needs to be more white space. Well, more white space means more dialogue, right? Yeah. Because your action lines are now being cut out. Yeah. So, so you get pages and pages of dialogue with very little action. And so yeah. it's like, like you say, when it comes time to actually filming it, you sort of realize my gosh, these people are talking way too much <laughs> in this moment, you know? Yeah. It's like uh, you, you're you not going to have somebody, uh, you know, uh, wailing on and on about their feelings when literally a shot of a single tear. Will, That's all it needs. Yeah. That's all it needs. Right? Well, uh, you know. So, so I, I, find, I find you're absolutely correct. A, a, a big part of rewriting scenes for me is really trimming that fat. It is, yeah. Getting to the to the heart of what these characters need to say. I think I think saying your feelings is is probably not the best um, route when it comes to writing a character's dialogue. You know, I've been married twenty years. I've I frustrated my wife maybe a couple of times, <laughs> and I could look at her and she could just give me a glance, and that is all I need. I was like, oh man. And if this was a script, character wise, that's a great scene because. <laughs> She's mad and then emotes it to me and I see it, right? And then I have all the dialogue. Okay, why, what's going on? Why are you upset? What did I, did I say something? I, you know, I say things, I'm sorry. You know, and so then the dialogue's all on my end. That can really reflect well in a script if you work on it that way and you can give it a really cool dynamic. Mm-hmm. She's probably gonna get mad at me. So <laughs> it's not her, it's me. Uh, people can like, oh, this guy's terrified. <laughs> so, all right, so... Um, do you have any other kind of uh, uh, tips for for the rewrite before we uh, before we kind of move on? I think I think uh, we've sort of nailed most of the key points. You know, yeah. Um, in in terms of in terms of dialogue, mm-hmm. I think what's important is to keep in mind the subtext. So so it's don't key. give on the nose dialogue. Don't you know? Context is always important of what the characters are saying and how they say it. But yeah what's really important is the emotional weight of what they're saying. And that's yeah. really the subtext. Right? I, I agree with you. You know, when you do subtext, you want to make sure you're hitting two or three things at the same time. And that kind of elevates your dialogue. I can't say this enough. Like when you start making really good work, when you start getting that reputation, like take advantage of it. Start networking, start being proud of what you're doing, because that, I mean, that's going to lead. I just look at you and I like, like, this is a guy that, that has, has done it right. 
And I just think that's absolutely awesome. And you're helping people now, Mm -hmm. which is even better. And what else do you have going on? A number of irons in the fire right now. So I've I've got um, an audio book coming out that we oh, cool. recorded recently. So I, I've got a novel. It's called Iron Dogs. It's It's been doing rather well. Uh, it's won a couple of awards. Uh, best Horror, Best Western. Best That's thriller. awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm so proud of it. You know, it's, it's, it's a work of love. Honestly. Yeah, I'm excited for you. Thank you. Yeah. And and so I got together with uh, a friend of mine here in Edmonton, who uh, is a filmmaker and a musician. He has his own home studio, recording studio. And we sat down and this was sort of a first for both of us. I, I sort of approached him. I said, I was thinking about maybe turning this book into an audio book. What do you think? Yeah, said, that's a great oh, idea. This. this is a great idea. Let's do yeah. this. You know, it and is. so so we did it. And um, the wonderful thing is, you know, um, his name is David Heacock. I'll, I'll throw uh, his name out there. Just free plug, <laughs> uh, free plug. Um, he he took it to this level I never even imagined. Originally, I just I just wanted you know like a nice clean recording. I thought right, hey, that's all we need. Oh my gosh, you know the amount of work that he put into editing of uh, this and making it sound as perfect as it could. And then we took the extra step and, and Dave added Foley to it. So now there's sound. That's effects. awesome. Then we took it a step further and he wrote original music for the audiobook. Wow. And to the point where, where he, he wrote so much music that we're actually going to be releasing in tandem with the audiobook the soundtrack. So you got everything but the movie. It is exactly, exactly. That's the only <laughs> that's thing cool. missing now. That's the only yeah. thing that's missing. Well, I'm sure it'll come. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's fantastic, you know. So that that's the one big thing, and then the other is um, something I've been working on called Boneyard Racers uh, that uh, some some of you folks out there might might have seen by now. A, a little trailer that I've got out there. It's a it's a short film that I wrote, uh, and I'm one of the actors in. Um, and boy, was that a lot of fun to do. You know? oh, I look forward to seeing it when it's, uh, when it's fully out there and we could watch it. Absolutely. And we're going to put it onto the festival circuit. And see how it goes. Oh, wonderful. Well, well, congratulations with all that, Neil. And I wanted to say thank you for being on the show today. It's always great to have an excellent resource that can talk to us from experience. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share in your social media where you can tag us at The Successful Screenwriter.